Oh, hell no. We got some people trying to get pregnant up here. Hold on. Where's my belt? Let me get my damn belt. Kokoro, you think you're grown? You think you're grown, young lady? This is what you're going to get right here because you still young enough to get that butt whooped. Talk about some being pregnant. What? I'm going to let you know what time it is because clearly you forgot your watch. Not in my house. What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Scott. Welcome to the Scott Report. Today, we're here to talk about Darling and Frank's episode 17. Yeah, you heard right. Looks like Kokoro got some baby fever, and we know she's had a thing for Miss Suru for quite some time, but I didn't know it was like this. Oh, my God. First and foremost, the Nines show up in this episode, and every time they come around, they just stir up some shit. But basically, what they found out is that she has been reading up on childbirth. She's trying to find out how to reproduce, like, the real way, the natural way, the way people have been doing it for the beginning of the time and that is forbidden for these kids that is something that met, papa has mandated as something they've never learned about and there's reasons for why that's done and we're definitely going to get into that because it was a lot to chew on in this episode i want to backscale a little bit and talk about um some things from last week because i didn't get to do a video last week but before i get to that does anybody else feel that we just may run out of time for this series or maybe we're going to get a season two and maybe it's because this series has just been doing so well week after week after week we've just had just a very good run of episodes that i feel like even though we're in the second half of this series i feel like we're going to run out of time as far as how to either clean this up clearly or this is going to get dark because they push that dark button more and more and more each week especially in this episode that this could very well end in tragedy and that will be bad i mean I want it. I want to see the tragedy. You guys know how I am by now. But at the same time, you know, just seeing everything these kids are going through, they deserve to have something good happen to them. And, you know, for them to finally start to unravel things that are going on with the humans and the kids and now with reproduction and the claxosaurs and the claxosaur princess that was introduced last episode who is starting off to be quite a beast, by the way, as we're finally getting a real villain in this series. I just feel like it's a little bit too late to be trying to introduce these things. Maybe it should have been introduced a little bit sooner, but this goes back to some of the things that I talk, was talking about that I wanted to cover last week. Um, the Claxosaur Princess, number one, I'm pretty sure it's a Claxosaur Queen, or why would she be a Claxosaur Princess? So if they want to, you know, we have room to explore that and go a little bit higher in that note in a second season or maybe with the episodes that we have left. But it's clear that Zero Two is created to be the anti claxosaur princess. Like they were trying to build their own weapon against her, especially because the two look very similar. So I'm pretty sure at this point, Zero Two. I mean, it, it goes without saying that Zero Two wasn't the only person that they experimented on or tried to do this experiment. She may actually be the perfect product of what they were trying to do. But now with this claxosaur princess being introduced, it's even more clear as day. It's just making it more blatant the reason that she was built for and it's definitely to combat this thing and the next thing i want to talk about is like the kids themselves because we learned last week you know they're getting gray hair you know we've always known that them being these pilots these parasites take a toll on their lives so you have to start to wonder how much time do they have left because i don't remember her name i'm sorry but the girl with the red hair remember when she was taking the little um bath with zero two and zero two noticed that she had gray hair so it looks like she's dying and then you had the scene with zarome and um futoshi futoshi or Fut yeah futoshi what the hell why do i say futoshi i'm pretty sure i was gonna say fudo i'm pretty sure that's not his name <laughs> but you saw him you know, he was saying he was going on diet, but actually what he was doing is he wasn't eating. He was throwing up his food, and Zerome was very worried about him. I'm beginning to think something's going on with him, too. Like, maybe he's reaching the point where he's starting to die. I mean, this story is getting very, very grim, and it has all the makings that it needs to end in tragedy. And it probably will, but you know, the shining points were we got to see a happy Zero too. One of the best things I liked about last episode was to see her happy, to see her smiling, to see her be with her darling and around these other kids and know what it's like to be around people who care about her and actually give a shit about her. And hell, even Ichigo has changed. I mean, I'm not going to forgive what she did, but the fact that she's growing up, she's maturing, she's finally accepted that her and Hero isn't going to happen. And what, what was going on with her, with Zero Two and Hero was way bigger than what she had going on. She knows that, she understands that. She's accepting of Zero Two again, and 
you know, all is well. I mean, I really like these kids now. And I used to think they were fodder, but as the story went on and on and on, they all started to grow in their own way. And the next thing I want to talk about is that opening again. The opening keeping the same song, which I never really was a fan of. I mean, I don't hate it. It's just not the type of thing that I go and say, you know, I got to listen to that Tharley and Frank's OP. But I, I must say that the visuals in this second part is definitely better than the first. I mean, honestly, I used to pass the intro sometimes in the first half, but this one, the visuals are very, very good. I know when they were uh, fortunately coming out when the Fandy War came out, you know, when everybody fading into dust, that's just been jokes for days. But the big thing to take out of is that remember the first half or the first opening had red visuals, which represented zero two. And it looks like we primarily got her side of the story. The second half is blue. So that's representing hero. So we're going to probably get more about him now. You know, the two X's and the logo is red and blue. So it's a lot of symbolism there. I like the imagery that they use. The song actually meshes a lot better with this opening as well. And it's a lot of things there that you wonder that can kind of determine that this series might end in tragedy. I really hope it doesn't. I mean, again, I wouldn't be mad if we get like a grim ending because I just like seeing stuff like that because it's reality. But uh, these kids deserve to be happy. And, you know, we can do anything that we can and make sure these kids are okay and break down this human adult system of what's going on, then I'm all for it. So Papa sent the nines of all people to go check on the kids. And these kids are just asshats. Well, at least... Alpha is, you know, the rest of them seem kind of chill. They or they may, may just seem like a little bit sneaky, but it's like whenever Alpha's on the screen, you just know he's there to start some shit. He's he mouths off to everybody. He's devious. He's a tool, and whenever he's around, he's gonna cause some trouble for somebody. But you know, the kids and myself, understandably, were getting a little bit worried about Papa. As you know, Papa sent them where they were. He left them there. And, you know, he didn't check on them or anything. And that's starting to worry me, like, what's going on with the kids or why they were cast out. According to Alpha, you know, the rest of the not, the kids, they were like, well, you know, they got sent to a camp. You were the only kids that were here. So it's making me wonder why these kids were cast out, especially after the destruction of their home. That's just a really big thing for them to be left out. Like, are they, like, contaminated or something? Did they get, like, exposed or something in that last battle that they had that they felt that they need to keep these kids away? But you know what? We actually found out, you know, this was all just another social experiment of twisted ass dr franks where he just wanted to see what they would do in this type of situation that's pretty messed up because these kids they were optimistic but at the same time they were a little bit crushed they were beginning to lose hope that anybody was going to come out there for them so he just did the best that they could in order to live and just hope that maybe somebody will come through and if they don't then we're just gonna have to live this way until someone does and how about hero grunt horns imagine that i know a lot of people have already speculated that that you know zero two is the red demon and he's gonna be the blue demon but I knew it had some type of risk when we saw that he injected some of her blood and the whole risk of being able to ride with her more than three times and he was able to do it but we saw his body was changing now we're finally getting down to the heart of the matter of what that is causing and I like the parallel that we have here because you know zero two was told and lied to that she could be human if she keeps killing enough Claxosaurus, so she's wanted to be human. She's finally faced the truth. And know that the hero, that Pa Mama and Papa and all these people, she knows that they were lying to her now. And that's why I'm glad that she's found her darling and she's actually happy with it. But also props to Hero as well, because Hero, he's okay with what's going on with him. He's accepting that these horns are growing because it's making him feel closer to Zero Two. He's to kind of like now that you want to be human and I'm becoming a monster, but this monster is making me feel like I'm closer to what you are so we can love each other even more. And the maturity of these kids, I always like to take the time out and applaud who's ever writing this series because honestly, this feels like Dawson's Creek. And what I mean by that is these kids are way too intelligent and too in touch with their feelings to be, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old because, you know, how they express love, how they know what love is, how they know what their feelings are, even though it's the first time that they've experienced it, they understand it. These kids know what's going on to have a better grasp and understanding of what's going on with their bodies and their lives, more than humans who are like way beyond adulthood, who are still trying to find this happiness and that they have. So I really like that these kids are expressing this early. It brings a little bit of weight down that this series has. But the way that everybody is just now, you know, just coming together with their feelings, going all the way back to Goro saying that he loves Ichigo. Now we have what's going on with Kokoro and uh, Misuru finally accepting each other, loving each other, kissing. 
baby making because we know that's what's going to happen. And this is something that's going to cause a big ripple in the series because, you know, it was forbidden. It was hidden for a reason. And I can't necessarily, you can't fault Kokoro at all. She just wants to know the truth. She wants to know why, you know, humanity just doesn't do things the natural way anymore. And she said, you know, we are born to pilot these Franks. But I want to leave something behind. I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave something behind besides being this pilot because I know I'm going to die one day. But if I'm going to die, I want to leave something behind. And that is just big. That was a huge moment with me. And again, you know, Alpha, he's an asshat. And most of the nines are asshats or they all are sneaky or devious or something. And, you know, we found out that the reproductive system um, is forbidden. And... I wonder if the reason why the Franks are piloted the way that they are is to depress these sexual desires that these kids have. You really do have to wonder that now. It's all making sense and becoming a little bit more than fan service as things are becoming more and more and more out the open as we reach the end of this series. And this, this series, it really does have the making to be a masterpiece depending on how it ends because, you know, a lot of people will disagree with me when I say it's better than Evangelion because we have to wait to see how it ends. But on the road that it's been, I think we got a masterpiece in the making. This is definitely going to be the next masterpiece that we've gotten since ReZero. I will say that again. But I'm also worried about Kokoro because we know how these adults work. When you start doing things outside of what they want you to do, well, they're going to take the measures that they need to snuff you out and make sure it doesn't happen anymore. And we see this has not been a first time occurrence. This goes all the way back. As a matter of fact, when you start to reach puberty, they start suppressing those feelings that you have and make you forget about it. As we saw a similar thing start to happen with um, Nanachi and, or Nana. And, you know, the ass hat Alpha was there to point that out. When, you know, they were talking to Kokoro and they were basically scolding her saying, you know, you shouldn't think about this. This is forbidden. Your job is to do what you're told to do. He steps in and says, so this is the same thing that you went through, right? Yeah, yeah, you're starting to go through puberty. And that's not a good thing. And I would like to know what happened with her, or at least I'm pretty sure they're going to explain it because all of a sudden we saw she started feeling a little bit emotional last time. And now once she's seen what was going on with Kokoro, she's had the same feeling herself and it started tearing her brain apart. We know these people are not above manipulation. I mean, look what they did to Zero Two. Look what they did to Hero. They completely tried to wipe out their memories. So I'm pretty sure the same thing is going on with the adults as well. And these people as a society are just being controlled by these humans who are doing everything possible to stomp out these Klaxosaurus. So I'm ready to get to the point of finding out why is the minute so big besides them just being, you know, big monsters that just wants to destroy everything why do they want to i'm pretty sure they have their reasons as well so it'd be interesting if we actually get into that and with that uh, the, ma the maturity train just keeps going and going and going is now we have miss suru and kokoro as the next official couple in this series and these kids just made the next big step they got it on and yeah i'm pretty sure they're about to have a child so we're gonna see what's gonna happen with that and uh, i wonder if it's gonna come out entirely human i mean that could be one of the reasons why the humans don't want them doing it too. But we'll just have to see. And yeah, honestly, I'm all for the maturity train that this series is on. I mean, Evangelion was just a scream fest and emotional baggage and, you know, a whole bunch of emo people just like it because they were going through the same thing. Darling and Franks takes the mecha genre and deconstructs it again because we're actually getting some kids that are aware of their feelings of what they're doing and it's just so much well done. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. So guys, let me know what you thought of this episode. Definitely let me know some of your thoughts theories and comments in the comments below if you like the video go ahead and drop a like and if you want to hear more go ahead and hit that subscribe button as there's not a shortage of content you guys indulge on on this channel check out my anime rap cypher 2.0 if you have it already as well that came out this week and also check out my live reaction for Boku no hero academia so as i always say you guys can be anywhere on youtube right now but you chose to listen to me i really appreciate that so thanks for stopping by and also be sure to hit that bell so you'll know whenever i drop a video it's your boy scott signing out See you soon.